My stimulators and maybe some other tires. I don't want my tail to go past the bend of the hook. And I don't want my overwing to go past the end of the tail when I, when I tie. So what I do is go ahead and measure that so it's going to end just pretty much at the bend of the hook. Do you okay. do that for a pro from a proportional standpoint? Yeah, and, and, just the, and just for me an aesthetic standpoint. Okay. And I will take that, it's not necessary for me to trim this, although I could, but I will take that first wrap hard, okay, and the second wrap, and the third wrap, all right? But then as I start coming back, this guy doesn't want to play well with others, um, I'll lighten up, okay? I still have thread tension but I'm not pulling down as tight as I did up front, okay? And I'm going to come back just pretty much over the point of the hook, okay? And it'll keep that tail down. It won't flare it out, okay? Here's another trick. Lots of times when you're going in to cut fibers, it's unnatural. Turn your hand upside down, and then just go in. Hmm. And it's easy. And the other other piece is, your hands are probably the, the greatest tool you have in fly tying. So lots of times, like like me, I'm just getting old, so I shake sometimes. Hmm. Yeah. Put one hand up against the other, or brace it up against your vise, and 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 you'll be in good shape. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do for this, and again, this is not so much a pattern as it is uh, a type of fly and, and technique oriented. The other thing is this is fine copper wire, and you notice I have a veritable smorgasbord of scissors here. Uh, that's because I misused them earlier in my fly <laughs> tying career, and so consequently they have all sorts of serrations in them. But you could take, you know, the runt of the litter and... Uh, Go down to the deepest recesses of your blade if you're going to cut wire from a spool. And that way uh, you won't ruin your good scissors. And these are, I got these from these guys. These are Dr. Slick midge scissors. They're just, they're just great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is tie uh, my rib in. And I'm going to tie that on my side. I'm going to rock it away. Okay. And... I want to make sure I got a real good foundation. Hey. Okay. Straighten up. Dave made me do it. Sure. It's hard for me getting kicked in the ass. Eve said that and hard to me. Don't make them separate you. Give me a moment to find what I want here. You're a typical fly tire. You have more shit than you. <laughs> you know, well, you know the you know the the phrase uh, the phrase is boy that guy really has his shit together. <laughs> I'm the kind of guy that has a little bit of shit everywhere. <laughs> it's together all over the room. Um. I'm just going to use this. We'll tie a lighter one. This is a little um, pre noil treated dubbing from Renee Harrop. And again, a little dubbing goes a long way. And what I'm going to do is reverse wrap my hackle back down toward the tail. Tie it off with the rings. With the, with the wire. wire, yeah. And that was initially popularized years ago by Al Troth up in Dillon. How much are you grabbing? Sorry. The, the, how much are you grabbing? Just a... 
come through, I think. Yeah. I mean, again, what I was saying earlier is if you think about just covering the thread as opposed to covering the hook, you won't get a dubbing body that's, that's so heavy. And I want it a little bit thicker. Okay, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to tie it in again on my side. Usually, there's a little bit of bare stem, just a little, left. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I take one or two turns right at the base mm -hmm. of that abdomen. And now I'm going to walk it back. And I palmer my stimulators somewhat full because I tend to typically fish them on pockets and, and you know, major currents and secondary currents as opposed to flat water. <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish on, on my side and just like, you know, we did earlier with uh, tying off that parachute hackle, uh, instead of thread I'm using wire and I catch that and then I'm just going to gently rock that ribbing thread up through the stimulator. Are you necessarily trying to rib it on top of the palmered hackle? You won't. You're going right over it. Yeah. You're, you're you're going this way. Your hackle went this way. You're going yeah, your your you're hackle went this anyone. way. Your rib is going this way. Okay, and so I'll trim off that excess. Get that wire out of there. If I have an errant fiber or two, I'm not going to worry about that too much. All right, I'm going to take, all right, so now I'm ready for the wing. I'm going to take a clump of hair that obviously is about easily twice the amount as I used for the tail. Same routine, comb out the under fur. Put it in the stacker, even up the tips. Yeah, you dance. Pull it out slowly. All right, now I want that wing here again, as I said, to end right at the, over the tail, okay? Um, basically, I mean, stoneflies and caddisflies don't have tails. And that's another reason for kind of having it mask right up over it. All right, now I'm gonna take that, and here again, your, your fingers are the best tool you have. So you can adjust to get that right, that correct length. And I'm gonna grab that with my non-tying hand and what I'm going to do is trim off the butts at a slight angle, okay? And I'm going to I'm going to bring it in diagonally, and I'm going to rock it flat and slide it back. And I'm going to catch it with my thread, and I'm really going to crank down on it but I'm not going to let go with my non-tying hand, okay? In other words, the hand on the bobbin is the tying hand, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to really torque on this until I get the majority of those fibers, butt fibers, bound down, okay? All right, I can do one of two things. I can go back in here and trim some of those a little bit further, okay? Or I can take a few more thread wraps, which I'll do. And I don't necessarily have to cover them entirely. All right. Now what I'm going to do is take one more feather that will be larger than the first, okay? 
And with these whiting capes, you'll be going up here because the amount of usable feathers is just absolutely amazing. But I'm going to build a thorax that's a little bit bigger than the abdomen, okay? And what I'm going to do here, this is where it gets different. I'm going to strip off quite a bit of that stem, okay, because I want to be able to tie it in easily. And when I go to tie it in, what I'm going to be doing is tying it in with a hackle feather forward and the stem backward, okay? So, and it doesn't really matter how much of this I have remaining. I just want to make sure I leave a little bit of that stem, again, at the front. I have a little bit of stripped stem at the front. Okay, and I'll just grab that and tie that in. Do the whiting capes have a, a shiny side or a The whiting, the, it, all capes do. They'll have a con, they look like this. So which side do you, does it matter when you tie that in? It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> doesn't, matter, doesn't matter to the fish. <laughs> yeah, that's the rumor going around. Doesn't matter to them either. It really doesn't. And what I'll do here, just for just for demonstration purposes, is use a you know a, a, a darker dubbing, just so you can see the the pronounced difference here. And again, I am right back at the eye. Okay. And what I'm going to do is dub a thicker thorax, but again, not putting a tremendous amount of dubbing onto the thread. You know, it's the old, it's the old German Bauhaus principle, less is more. Alrighty. So you would, you would dub longer piece of thread instead of heavier dubbing? Yes. I see. Yes. I would rather take more wraps with less material than less wraps with more material. That makes sense. Okay, and I'm simply going to wrap this thorax back. I'll probably need some more. And I don't need much more. And you notice I pull that wing back. All right, I'm right at the base of the wing, and I'm simply going to take my hackle now and wrap it back to the base of the wing. When I get to my side, again, diagonally, catch it with one turn of thread, okay? Catch it with one turn of thread, clip it off, and... So that's where you're going to tie it off. Yeah. I can find my thread. I'll cut my thread. And I'm and I'm done. <clears throat>